Okay. Hey guys. I'm Danielle. So I'm Ray. I'm the Papa. Hi guys. I'm welcome. You still? I'm the Ray. Hey guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Otherwise, the government will listen to your every move and watch your every sentence. Hi guys, and welcome to the Lucky Stove. I'm Danielle, and today I'm going to show you how to make bagels. I'm really excited about this. Now, I have to give you um, a warning. If you are sensitive to gluten, have celiac disease or any you just don't want gluten in your life this recipe is not for you okay I have to tell you that right now but that's none of us here and so we use we use gluten we use um, tarve gluten or vital wheat gluten if you want um, to make our recipes that goes along with our pastas it goes with the breads sometimes if I'm doing a lazy bread I won't use gluten because I don't have the time to let it uh, do the interacting with the yeast to let it rise but just to let you know, this is a gluten recipe, okay? So, I will bring out some more recipes that don't have gluten, but this is my favorite, this is one of my favorite bread recipes. I have many, but this is one of my favorites. Okay? Okay. So, let's get started. I'm gonna show you what the ingredients are. I have my handy dandy um, notebook here because I, I wrote it up and I don't have it memorized, okay? So, for the ingredients, just to make sure, we have Tarvaklute from the Noten shop. Tarvaklute. They don't have vital wheat gluten. This is from the Nile. This is from the Noten shop, but it's the same thing. I, I researched it. It's the same thing. Whatever. Okay. Pink Himalayan salt. Good. Good. Yeast. Yeah, I know. Annoying. Baking powder. It's annoying because it's not in a container. <laughs> they switched my brand on me. Did I say good good? Here we go. Some good good. Lupin flour. Xanthan gum. Molasses. Unsweetened. This is unsweetened molasses. Okay. It actually says it's out. Flax. Flax meal, so this flax seeds that I ground up myself in my coffee grinder. Coconut oil. And the last ingredient is water. I'm not adding salt because this is salty. <laughs> and I'm not going to overdo it. So, I've shown you what we're going to use. Now we just got to bring it all together and get started, okay? Cool. Alright guys, so we're going to start with the yeast so we can bury it. Like I said, we're not adding any salt. But if you're not going to use molasses, then my suggestion is to use sucrum gold or your brown uh, sh uh, sweetener of t uh, choice and go that route. But I don't have any of those, but I do have molasses. So it gives me that, it still gives me that brown sugar type flavor without the sweetness, which is where the good good comes in. Okay, so 10 grams of yeast. Let me wake this thing back up. The her. Wake up her. All right, here we go. So this one sack, it says that one sack is seven grams. So I'm glad I opened two of them. Now we're gonna go with the lupin flour. You can find this lupin flour, lupin flour, I think now just about everywhere because it's become such a staple in the low carb com community. But this is a, um, this is what you call sweet, I guess. Um, I haven't found the, the, the bitter one that everyone complains about. I only found this one and this one's not bitter. So just to let you know. So of the lupin flour, you need 80 grams. So that's 92 to my scale. <laughs> I got a little ahead of myself. So let me just make sure. There's this one. Okay, so we're gonna add the baking powder. You're probably thinking, okay, if you're adding yeast, why add baking powder? Well, I'm doing it for the sacred hide. You can just not do it and then see how it works out. That's a good thing about cooking and whatnot. 
Of course, this is baking, and baking is more of a science. This uh, four grams that I'm going here. Nice. That's two teaspoons, just so you know. Um, let me see here. The you can just not do the baking powder and test for yourself and see if it's worth it. But in my case, I don't want to do that. I already know that some of these things react the way they react, and some of them don't. And for my baking, my keto bread baking experience, I've had to add baking powder in the past, so I'm not going to change it now. <laughs> I'll test that out at another time. Okay, now I'm going to use my, um, my zampin gum, and that's actually a one teaspoon. Here's a hole. So, there we go. Because you, know <laughs> you know how my teaspoons work. Okay, and I said salt, and again, I don't know why I say salt. The molasses is salty enough. You don't have to add salt to it unless you're not going to use the molasses. That's how you do it. 190 grams of vital wheat gluten. Alright. 40 grams of flax meal. Like I said, I grind my own in my coffee grinder. You don't have to buy things all pre-ground if you have a, a coffee grinder already that's a, that does the job well because that saves you money in the end. I'm very much about saving money. There we go. Woohoo! 40 on the dad! Yes! Okay. <laughs> I'm just a weirdo! Now, the next thing is good good. Now this is two tablespoons, okay? Because you can do one tablespoon if you want, or you could just not do it at all. But I like my bread a little bit sweet, and I feel that if I eat bread and it doesn't have that type of flavor of a sweetness, then I'm going to still be itching for the, the, the carb-heavy uh, bread that I get in the store. Because the carb-heavy bread at the store is kind of sweet, and it's kind of addicting. So I, for fun, I substitute. Okay? Okay. Oh, the, the last thing that we're going to put into the dry ingredients, and actually, if you think about it, sweetener is actually part of a wet ingredient. At least that's where I heard somewhere. I mean, I could be wrong. <laughs> but in the, these dry ingredients, we're going to add 30 grams of good good. Uh, if you're using Swerve or Sucre and Gold, any of your brown uh, mixes, uh, sweeteners, then just use two tablespoons of that instead. But, and you don't need the molasses. You see what I'm saying? So you have your good good and you have your molasses. These two are a pair. They're together. They're married. They're going to make a beautiful brown colored uh, child. Otherwise, you get your, your swerve uh, brown gold uh, sucrine. What is the other? Monk fruit. All, any of the brown substitutes that give off that brown, brown sugar flavor. That's what you're looking for. All right, guys. So now we have our hot water here from the tap. And that's 200 milliliters of hot water. Uh, you can do the conversion uh, through Bing if you want, but that's what it is, 200 milliliters. Maybe I'll convert it for you and I'll put it on the screen, perhaps. So now what I need is 60, uh, 60 grams of coconut oil, and we're putting it directly into the hot water because you're also going to add your molasses in here. So you're doing, the, you're doing all the wet things at the same time so they can pour in all together. So... The last thing you want to add to this lovely bowl is your molasses. Okay? Now, with the molasses, it's one tablespoon, otherwise known as one tablespoon. <laughs> That's not even funny, but I think it is. So now I'm going to mix this up just to get the coconut oil and the water and the molasses kind of homogenous so that way when we pour into the dry ingredients it's all in one it's all in one uh, form pretty much okay so we will let this sit for a second and I'm gonna come back to the dry and I'm gonna give that a good mix and the reason why is because you want them all you want all of your dry ingredients to be incorporated Now, I want cinnamon bagels, because I, like I like the taste of cinnamon, but I'm wondering if I'm, if I'm going to split it up some, so that way I can give myself some options, 
Maybe I'll do some with cinnamon and some with chili and onions because Renee really likes that. Yeah, I'll do that. So I'm not gonna add the cinnamon right now. I'll wait till the end. Okay, so I'm making a well. Is it necessary? Probably not, but I like it to, so I can pour in my wet ingredients. Whee! You see the well did nothing, but that's all right. Start off with a spoon. Just so that way all of the ingredients can not be stuck to your hand just yet. We're starting off like this, bringing it all together. Depending on how, uh, how hot or cold it is or what climate or those type of things, the altitude of your home, you might need more water, you might need less water. Um, but I always do 200. Usually when I would make normal, uh, not normal, but carb laden bread. The idea was that, uh, yeah, it always depended on the altitude. So I'm pretty sure the same applies. Now I'm going to knead it within the bowl. So I've got some fat from the coconut still going on here. You may have wondered how hot should the water be? The water should be hot to touch, like if you're in a bath. So if you've ever bloomed yeast, if you have ever bloomed yeast, you know that the temperature should be like blood temperature. Not too hot, but not too cold. And that sounds really stupid. So I'll put, um, I'll put degrees on the screen for you so you can see that. But for right now, I'm bringing it together. And it smells really good. I'm bringing it together right now. And once I've done that, because I don't, I don't want to throw my uh, bread on or my dough onto the onto the countertop. Not just yet. I never want to at the first stage because I just I'm gonna put it back in the bowl anyway. So I feel like why should I? Now that's the lazy part of me. If you want to take it out then and knead it, then do that. But look, I thought I see, I've seen it on Jim, with Jimma, Jimma Bigger Boulder Baking. She kneaded directly into the bowl with her hands not with a mixer so I'm about that life sometimes you don't have a, a big flat surface and you gotta make do and this is part of making do if if you have to otherwise you just keep on going on so I'll be back once this is uh, to my liking alright guys so I've been working this dough not for very long at all and I don't plan on it because I'm gonna let it rise this uh, this ri this bread is going to rise or this dough is gonna rise the first rise 45 minutes so I'm gonna cover it with a cloth uh, just so that you can um, see again with Gemma because I learned a lot from Gemma from Bicker Boulder Baking as well as a few others but I mean I have to be honest Gemma from Bo Bigger Boulder Baking I learned a lot of how to how to make breads and whatnot and start things from scratch but that's a that's outside of my point I'll link her um, she said if your bowl comes out clean then you know that your dough is good at this point, guys, you can really do what you want with this. Um, you can make pizza. You can make it into a pizza dough. I would say cut it in, in threes and then roll it out and then put it on a pan, uh, par-bake it uh, after you let it rise for about 45 minutes. Um, otherwise, you can do what we're going to do and make bagels, okay? It's up to you. And like I said, this is a basic uh, bread recipe as well. So you could just let it rise for an hour and 30 minutes instead and just have yourself a regular piece of regular uh, uh, loaf of bread. Use a, use a loaf pan, you know, fit it in there. That's also up to you. You can, you can, this is a, I think you can use this for many, many, many things. You don't have, this doesn't have to be just a bagel recipe. You're going to get a chewy bagel with these and that's the most exciting part because you know, you get the bagels. You want to pull it, you want that chew, you want the original of it, the, the, that snap kind of thing. You don't get that with some of the other recipe uh, recipes out there, such as Fathead or whatever. And it, it's just what it is, because that's the nature of it. There's no gluten in it, so of course you're not going to get that. But you can certainly get it with this, and I'm very excited about it. So now that we've got this uh, nice and, and round, what we're going to do is we're going to put it, like I said, I'm going to put it back in a bowl, cover it. I have my oven preheated to 60 degrees uh, Celsius. Uh, otherwise, it's just your lowest. Uh, if you don't have a warm spot in your home, you can either set it in your microwave, off, <laughs> off. Don't turn it on and warn everybody who lives with you, do not turn the microwave on. Otherwise, you can put it in your oven 
and uh, let it set at the lowest setting. If you have a, if you have a, a hot box for bread, you can do that too. We have a kitchen towel. I'm gonna throw this over the bowl, like so. Put it in my uh, oven at 60 degrees. So I will see you in 35 to 40 minutes. The whole deal is till it's doubled. That's the deal, till it's doubled, okay? All right. All right, guys, we're back 45 minutes later. The dough has doubled, as you can see. Uh, 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 very nice, right? And while this was happening, I decided to do a few things. I did talk about making um, making uh, the bagels. The bagels are great, the chili and the onion, and also the cinnamon. But now I'm gonna do one more step, and that is to make some rolls, okay? So this same dough, we're gonna do three different things. We're gonna make rolls, we're gonna make cinnamon raisin, no, not raisin. Raisins have way too many carbs. If you have some unsweetened cranberries, you can definitely do that. Um, or if you've had some dried cranberries that you sweetened yourself, you can do that, that'd be so delicious. Um, otherwise, this is what we're gonna do. Oh, or blueberries, hello. <laughs> That's simple, right? But I don't have any of those. What I do have, however, is cinnamon, I have the chili and onion, and we're gonna make the rolls. So, I'm gonna do what's most neutral. Always work with what's neutral and move yourself up, okay? Because otherwise you're gonna be mixing flavors, you're gonna be like, ah. Uh. Okay, so first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weigh the, the dough. So So we're gonna cut it, like I said, into eight pieces. Let me do that in my head or on my board and I'll be right back. Okay guys, so we are back and I've got these all weighed out and I'm gonna do a special one that I'll show you later what it looks like, okay? So first, we're gonna do our rolls, like I said. We'll make them sandwich rolls. Make them sandwich rolls. So I separated them and I'm just tucking them in like this, bringing the ends together or the, yeah, to make them as round as possible. Just gonna do that. Do another tuck, 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 tuck. See that? Poking it in there. And here we have one. Okay, a baking pan because these are just as simple as being done, okay? Once these rise the second time, they're done. They're ready to, to be baked. Here are these two. You think, why are you gonna use these big old, uh, this big old pan for just two? I know, I don't know, but I am, okay? That's just what I'm gonna do. But um, what I'm gonna do also is I'm going to get the bagel part ready now. Now with the bagel, I'm gonna set this to the side. So we have our, our bread rolls and I'm gonna cover them back up just for the moment. Normally I would say to dust your cloth with the, with the flour that you're using or put plastic wrap over it and uh, spray some oil, but I'm not doing that. So <laughs> I'm not doing it, but you can and that'll help, uh, help keep it from sticking. So now we're gonna do the neutral flavors which is cinnamon. Cinnamon is more neutral than chili and onions, wouldn't you say? <laughs> so, what we're gonna do is I'm going to get some cinnamon, just as much as I'd like, and you, you would have to do the same. I'm gonna sprinkle it on the countertop. Can you see that there? I'm sprinkling it on the countertop. And now, I'm just gonna, oh, it was almost out too. So, so that way this one can have it as well. I'm just going to press it in, press it in, kind of like a miniature knead. But this one's gonna stay in its own spot because the other one needs cinnamon too. All bagel lives matter. We're gonna put some cinnamon all over this, let me see. Oh, oh it smells so good! <laughs> of course cinnamon smells good, right? But when you know what's coming, it's kind of like, so. I'm gonna need this one in, and I'm gonna need the other one in, and I'm gonna set that next to the rolls, and then the rolls, uh, and so that way they can um, also um, 
they can also rise. We're gonna give it. We're gonna give this an also a second rise. Okay. So with the rolls they go, I'm gonna put them on this side. There's one, and here's two. So I'm gonna work on this, and I'll be back. Okay. All right. I'm putting a hole in here because I forgot to do that. That's kind of important. So as it rises, it rises with the hole. <laughs> For its second rise, otherwise there's no hole. Now, this is what I would say to do. See this? Nice and easy. Just to give it a good stretch. Because once it once it rises, it's going to be pushing up against itself. And you want to make sure you have enough uh, space. Alright, don't worry about it, the hole being too big. Because the rise of it will help it to uh, come back to a nice natural looking... Or not natural, but it'll be a hole. <laughs> oh... It smells so good. I love it. <laughs> okay, so we have this, and now I'm gonna go back to the other one and put the hole in there. Because I forgot. All right, this is the last. If you counted, you may have counted seven. This is the seventh. So you're probably wondering, okay, you cut it in eighths, I saw you. So what did you do with it? Where's the other one? Well, that one's gonna be a surprise, you'll see. Because you can do so many things with this. I want you to know that the options are technically borderline and endless. <laughs> So here's some more chili pepper here. Let me get that. And I'm gonna bring this in. And I'm just tucking it. Sorry for the sniffles. There we go. And just tuck the ends underneath. And you're thinking, oh, it's falling off. So what was the point of all of that? You'll see. What I don't, when it falls off right now, I pick up later, right? Yeah. So this is what I'll do. Make sure that they are that the bread is well connected to itself. And then I'll just do this. See guys? Dun da da dun. Now, this also will go on the pan to rise. They you have to kind of work fast. If you're a novice at this, it's okay. But you kinda of have to work fast because they want to rise. We got them here doing their job rising. I'm gonna put them back in the oven, the 60 degree oven, to rise some more. The bagels have another step. The the rolls, once they are done, they are done. I can bake them off. So, back in the oven they go. Now this is the dun dun dun, dun. This guy, if you have Italian seasoning, grab it folks because we are gonna make a pizza. Yummy, yummy, pizza time, pizza time, pizza time. I need to grab my handy dandy. Here we go. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to season this guy with some more seasoning salt because I like we like our crust to be delicious and flavorful. Some garlic, okay, pepper of course, black pepper. Whee! Okay. Now, this is where you can get your oregano and stuff like that, but this I'm just gonna make this part very simple, okay? I'm just going to make this crust. You're probably thinking that wasn't simple. <laughs> but this is pretty simple. This is actually quite simple. So now I'm just going to roll this out. Because you see, it already wants to pluff up and all that stuff. This could be a, you could get four or eight pizzas out of the dough that we made and make personal sized pizzas. I used to buy foil pans that were, uh, they were a pretty good size. And what I would do is I would make my pizza dough and then I would put them in the, uh, in the foil pans. I would shape them into the foil pans, uh, form them rather, and then I would put them in the freezer. And then after I was done with it, once they were ready out of the freezer, or once I was set for them, then what I would do is I would just 
uh, pull them out, top them, let everybody top them with their favorite things, and uh, we're gonna eat. Okay, so this is a small personal size pizza. I know I don't have a pan big, uh, the same size of the pizza. I'm cool with that. I'm gonna let this sit also for about 10 minutes. I would say, you know, start poking in the middle, but I'm gonna let it go ahead and do its rising. It's okay by me. I'm gonna put this also in the oven, 10 minutes. All right, guys, so the pizza crust has been rising for actually a little under 10 minutes. I'm gonna give it a poke in the middle here. Just in the middle. And now we're gonna get started. Okay, so Lydia created some sauce. She did a, a really nice barbecue flavored uh, sauce for the pizza uh, with tomato puree. You guys need to make sure you mind your own macros. We don't normally buy pizza sauce. We make our own sauce. I mean, all you really need is tomato puree and, uh, and some creativity. Yes, all you need is some tomato puree and creativity. And really, this is a uh, tomato puree, uh, some rosemary. If you had oregano, that'd be even better, but we don't. Oh well. A piece to show you what you can do with this crust, okay? So, normally we'll get some um, avocado, not avocado, some olive oil and brush it against it, but we are out of ol um, olive oil, so whatever. We're gonna go ahead and throw this in the oven. I'm gonna throw a little bit more cheese on top because who doesn't love cheese? And the oven has been pre is preheating at, at 175. Uh, you can also do 100, uh, rather 200, that's Celsius of course, and I'll bring this out when it's done because why wait for, we're still waiting for the other things to rise, but hey, we're hungry. So, the timer has gone off and check these out ladies and gentlemen. These look gorgeous. Now they may not be as big as you're used to seeing uh, with your, um, oh my word. We're getting uh, normal uh, bagels. I say normal, what I mean is carby bagels, but that's cool. These need to now boil in hot water, okay? Uh, and then they, then they bake. These bread rolls, they need to just bake. So I'm gonna transfer these guys out of here into a smaller pan and I'm gonna bake them off. And then these guys, they're gonna stay in their spot for the moment, just so that way I have more opportunity to work with them. So, be right back. Okay, so, for a good chewy bagel, you have to, have to add vinegar to the pot. A tablespoon or two is fine, but you need vinegar at least in the pot. That's for the good shine as well. Some people add sugar to it. You don't, I'm not gonna, obviously. Um, because I don't even think a Ritual would do me justice. So, a tablespoon or two of vinegar and then you uh, you just grab up, grab up the bagels and you put it in the in the pot let them boil for like two minutes on each side then you put them back on the pan and then they are ready for baking in the meantime like I the water needs to start boiling it needs to be at a good rolling boil before you put them in so I know these seem like a lot of steps but if you want bagels and you want them chewy and you want all this good stuff and you want all the stuff that you miss Give yourself some grace. Give yourself some time. Take a day where you want a food prep and do it. Now this is also going in the oven at 175 degrees. For 175 degrees, we are going to leave it in there um, for 25 minutes to let them bake. That's it. It's gonna be great. I'll see you when, we're, when we start the, the bagel process, as soon as the water starts boiling. Okay, you guys, the pizza is out, and to, if I want to be honest, which I always do, my suggestion is to first pre-bake your crust, at least for 10 minutes, 10 minutes to give it uh, so it has a chance to bake before you put all the toppings on. You don't have to, but then you might uh, wind up with a soggy, uh, soggy bread. And I kind of lifted it up and I felt it and it felt kind of soggy to be honest. And it's not because of the sauce, it's because I didn't 
pre-bake the the um I didn't pre-bake the crust, but here we are. Let's see here. Yeah. So lunch is served while we're waiting for breakfast. <laughs> All right. Let me see here. I do have a bigger slice. I'm going to take a smaller slice. That's only fair, I think. Okay. Will you see the pool? Mmm, oh that's good. Did you guys see that? Mmm. <laughs> well, one more time, see? And this I love. We'll find some more recipes with soy and husk powder or something. But if I want to be honest, I hate soy and husk powder. I made a whole lot of blown up breads that was a contributor to soy and husk. And we made pizza called Nasty Pizza. You check it out. It's in our trials and flops. You'll see. <laughs> Alright, see you when the... Oh, actually, looks like it's time for the to boil the, the bagels. All right. So, you grab your bagel, put it on the on the front side first on its face, because once you take it off, once you once you take it out of the water, the the side that has the that you scoop it up with because you need a spider whisk, the side that has the <laughs> the bottom side will have the the, the 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 shapings of the spider whisk. And you'd rather that than the front, just because it's prettier that way. It's outcome. Oh, it smells good. And you see, I'm using the neutral flavors first. It's more neutral than uh, chili and onion, that's for sure. And you see how it's also expanding. It's getting bigger. You don't leave it in too long, but you do leave it in enough. You need enough water for it to float. Now I'm going to flip it over. Gently. I'm not going to put my hand in the water. That's what I'm not going to do. <laughs> there we go. You could use a bigger pot and boil two or more at a time. But I wouldn't go as much. I would not go any further than uh, four. I really wouldn't. You put yourself in a situation when you go further than four, to be honest. Oh my goodness. Now, this is what we're going to do. I'll show you one more time. And then, you don't want it to shrivel up. That's what you don't want to do. You should place this on baking paper. Do you see that baking paper anywhere right here? Nope. I'm telling you what you should do. You just want to be gentle. Okay, next one. I'm putting it, I'm placing it this way. So that way, you see it looks like it expanded so much that the hole is kind of covered. And if it does, eh, well, you can have a bagel sandwich if you want. That's cool. We like those, don't we? And then flip it over and then do the same on the other side. Oh, man. That pizza was good. I was starting to feel a little uh, hungry. <laughs> that happens often. But not hangry. Just very hungry. I'm flipping this one over. Whee! And be careful. There we go. Don't forget, boiling water burns. <coughs> So, <laughs> all right, we're gonna, like I said, we're going to let these go. You saw how I did the first, you saw how I'm doing the second. You're going to do the same thing for the rest of them, and then you're just going to, and then you're going to go on. So this is nice, and I'll see you when it's ready to be put in the oven. Yeah. All right, guys, so the rolls are also done. They didn't take it. They did not take 25 minutes. And honestly, if I thought about it, they're smaller. It's not like a loaf, so it's going to take less time. It took about 10 to 15 minutes. Now let's crack these babies open. Beautiful. Oh. 
cool. <laughs> I am. I was just asking Lydia. I said, oh my goodness. I said, you, are you as full as I am? She's like, uh, kind of, yeah. I'm like, what did we eat? And I eat all good things, but that's not the problem. The problem is I keep eating. You're not supposed to eat when you're not hungry, right? But guess what? This is a cooking channel. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is not salted butter, which I love salted butter. But, uh. Mmm. You get to chew. Oh, you probably can't hear it now. Oh, well, not if I'm slapping it with butter. But hey, while I'm here. <laughs> Alright. So now we're just waiting on the bagels. You see how this goes? You can do so many things in a short amount of time. You can multitask food prep. Spring is here. delicious all right so there you have it folks we did like a lot we made um <laughs> we made cinnamon bagels chili chili and uh onion bagels with cheese on top we made rolls and as a matter of fact we took uh, the other roll we cut it in thirds and we put some more pizza stuff on there because it ha we had it and it's in the oven right now so there's another food prep option you have options Thank you so much for joining us at the Lucky Stove. May your stove bring you luck or a coupon. Thank you to all of you new subscribers and all you. Thank you to all of you oldies with goodies that stayed with us and have uh, have been cheering us on. We are working on some new recipes, including um, someone gave us a lovely idea for some for some Filipino food. So look look forward to that. And again, we are we are here to serve y'all as best as we can. Of course, we're gonna do what we can, when we can, and how we can. But don't forget to mind your own macros. Uh, this is uh, not a sprint. Y'all, if you need to walk instead of run, walk. Because as long as you get there, that's the whole point. Start small. If you don't know what to do, if you don't know what to do with keto, if this is too much, if this is too, too much, start with just lowering your carb intake. Or take, take, the, take the seed oils and the vegetable oils out of your dishes and replace them with some good healthy fats like coconut oil or avocado oil or olive oil. It makes a difference. Thanks again. We'll see you next time. And ta-da! Food prep. Okay guys, don't forget to comment down below. Guys? Guys? Guys?